Hi, I'm Jim Stroud, and this is my podcast. Today I had a very, <laughs> wow, a very interesting conversation with Andrew Trapuchets, who is the CEO of RedBalloon.Work. In my conversation with him, he said this. That being said, I just, uh, you know, a new customer for Red Balloon is Answers in Genesis. They're uh, a Christian organization. They have an ARC encounter. Uh, they do a magazine. You have a thousand employees, right? They're a pretty good size organization. Um, Indeed kicked them off and said, you can't post jobs with Indeed because of who you are. And so the uh, Ken Ham, who's the kind of CEO and founder, wrote a letter and said, look, we're we're just a, we're a Christian organization, but we're, we're looking to hire. Um, can't we participate in the platform? And Indeed basically said, you are not allowed to participate in this platform, uh, which is interesting to me because we've also heard this from multiple other you know, small construction company in Texas that said we are a, uh, they described their business as God fearing and freedom loving. And indeed said you are banned for life from me being able to post jobs and hire through our platform. So, wow, we're going to talk about that <laughs> right after this. The Recruiting Life is a newsletter that gives a quirky view on the world of work and aspires to educate, entertain, and inspire with articles, comics, podcasts, videos, and more. It is produced on a weekly basis by yours truly, Jim Stroud, and is supported by readers like you. Topics in this newsletter include the future of work, current labor trends, the impact of AI on the recruitment industry, and more. Subscribe now and receive it every Monday in your email by going to jimstroud.beehive.com. That URL is jimstroud.beehive, B-E-E-H-I-I-V.com. A link is in the podcast description. Don't wait. Subscribe now. Operators are standing by. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of the Jim Stroud Podcast. Today we have a very special guest. Special guest, tell us, who are you and what do you do? <laughs> Thanks for having me, Jim. Uh, my name is Andrew Crapuchets. Um, as you can imagine, growing up with the last name of Crapuchets was a, a, a joy and a delight as a young man. No um, every variation <laughs> of Crapuchets, uh, both uh, profane and not, have been uh, have been used. So. Uh, Andrew Krabschetz, I am the CEO and founder of RedBalloon.Work, which is the nation's leading pro-freedom job board. And I have had, I've been blessed to start a lot of businesses over the years. I've actually done six successful business exits over the years, um, which I can go into as as little or as much of that as you'd like. Grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area, did the dot-com thing. Now I live in beautiful Idaho with my wife and five kids. Okay, you, I, I have an idea what you do. I'm going to ask you to tell the audience what it is uh, Red Balloon's about. Um, but I'm thinking of Red Balloon and San Francisco, and those two things don't seem to merge in my head. Can you talk a little bit more about what you do so people understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, redballoon.work. We uh, basically, the reason I started the business, and I only started a little over two years ago, uh, it was two and a half years ago, I was the CEO of a uh, pretty good sized tech business um, that I'd actually sold a number of times, but I'd actually started and built. And my board decided that I was a little too conservative and Christian for their liking. And so I didn't have the right social media profile and um, and and they decided I just wasn't the right person to lead the business. So um, I am doing a large housing development in town. I own commercial real estate. I'm like, you know, that's fine. I'm going to take a year off. I'm going to do real estate, maybe work on a little bit of golf. Uh, and then a friend grabbed me and they're like, you know, what happened to you where you basically had to decide between your job and your values? Um, that's probably going to happen to a lot of other Americans. And so it would be awesome if those Americans had a place to go, a place where they could find a job where they don't have to um, go through all of the woke training that unfortunately is pretty pervasive in the workplace today. Um, and so I'm like, fine, I'll make a job board, redballoon.work. 
and it will have a thesis around freedom. And uh, I did that. And then I was going to just leave it alone and let it do its thing. But then the vaccine mandate came around and I said, look, it's a free country. If you want to get a vaccine, that is entirely on you. But you should have a conversation with your doctor, not your HR department about what you put in your body. And that was controversial enough that all of a sudden I started uh, being on Fox News a lot and uh, had the opportunity to talk to people all over the country. And we started making connections with job seekers and employers who actually just wanted to be free, who wanted to show up and work hard, have a meritocracy um, and uh, be judged based on their character, not their, their skin color or their social media profile or anything else. And it's amazing how much joy uh, is involved in just working hard and getting the fruit of your own labor. And um, and so that has been an amazing blessing. So we now work with over 3,200 businesses around the country. We've had well over a million job seekers on the platform looking for freedom. And Jim, this is the only business I've ever run where I get unsolicited thank you notes from perfect strangers. People saying, uh, I just wanted you to know you saved my marriage because my husband was working in a job for the last 10 years where they just hated his worldview. They did not love the way he thought about things and they were pushing a worldview on him. And when you swim in those waters for eight to 10 hours a day, it has a profound impact on your outlook on life and you can't help but bring that stuff home. Um, and she said he found a new job at redballoon.work and their marriage is more squared away. He's spending more time with their kids. They're starting to go to church again. So it really has an impact on on you and on where you work because your vocation is such an important part of who a person is, right? It defines who you are in a lot of ways. So being able to help people just go to work, work hard, go home, take care of their families and not have to deal with the latest social fad or uh, political correctness is um, has been a real blessing to a lot of people. So that's what redballoon.work is. We're connecting people who want to get back to what made America great, which is working hard and uh, enjoying the fruit of your labor. So that's it. I, I can only imagine the amount of hate you may have received from the left, uh, from sure. our friends <laughs> on the left. Um, what are some examples? Of how, what, tell, me, tell me about some of the pushback you received just for having a freedom-focused job board. Because right away, I can imagine uh, people saying that you are being discriminatory because you're pushing um, MAGA ideology. Just, just to throw That's it right. out there. I'm sure That's people right. have said that to you. What are some oh, yeah. pushback stories you received? Well, I think probably the worst one is there was a newspaper in South Carolina that did an article on Red Balloon and said, uh, and their thesis was that everybody who uses Red Balloon should have to wear a yellow armband. And I'm like, really? Like, wow. really? That's That's, that's where you want to go? Uh, do you even know what history or anything like really? And so for them to be that straightforward, uh, you know, Wired Magazine, I think, called me a ridiculously named CEO of a pathetic little business, you know, but that stuff can't bother you uh, because if it does, then um, you're not going to have a great day. So um, and with the last name of Crappy Shuts, people have been making fun of me my whole life. So really, like, what are you going to do? Like, you can't touch me. I'm untouchable. Like you've been uh, training your so, whole life for this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my whole life is preparing for it. Like, and you can't see, but I'm bald. Like, you know, I'm not, not you know, you know, it's just, uh, yeah, you can't you can't make fun of me in a way that actually uh, makes any difference. So um, so that's it. So so we've gotten plenty of that. Um, but it's totally worth it, right? Um, if you are worried about um, someone saying something bad about you or the vitriol or you know, people making fun of you, which we've gotten plenty of, um, then you're never going to go out and do anything. And you think about every story that you've read, every good story. Um, you know, you think of Lord of the Rings or you think of all the C.S. Lewis stories, right? Yeah. The hero generally isn't the person who stays at home on their couch watching the fire burn. Um, they're someone who goes out and does something. And you think, well, I would like the uh, the great story without the adventure and without the the hardship. Then it's not a great story. And, you know, in a lot of ways, I think that we are the most important part of the story, right? They're the people who are learning that it's time to be brave and stand up. Well, that might just be 
um, you know, whoever's listening, that that might be your story right now, that you need to be that person who decides I'm going to be brave. I'm going to be brave for other people. I'm going to be courageous because I need to give my kids, my community, my friends an example of someone who's not afraid to stand up to the woke mob, uh, but is willing to say the right thing um, no matter what it costs. And when you do that, it really will give courage and it will give encouragement to people all around you. So, um, yeah, there you go. When, when I heard about your company, a, a uh, scenario played in my mind, actually it was a conversation that I had with someone, and this was a couple of years back uh, during the uh, so-called summer of rage kind of yeah, situation. Right. And uh, someone who was a business owner was sort of looking at that on TV. We were in a restaurant and the TV on, it was showing the protests and whatnot. And the person said that really concerned him on, on, on different fronts, not just the political or social aspects of it, but from a business aspect of it. And I said, what do you mean? He says, well, um, what if I hire some people who are very extreme left? I don't know, because I don't ask them when I'm interviewing them. And it's you know not my business. So I don't really get into that. But what if some of these people who are feeling very passionate about leftist ideology, and they work for me, and then one of my... A uh, major client walks in, and he's wearing a uh, a MAGA hat, you know. Right. And the people in my employ become so triggered that they feel like they have to confront my client about his political beliefs. Client gets offended, and now I'm in danger of losing some business, which in turn endangers their jobs. You know, maybe from their standpoint, they don't care; they'll just get a job somewhere else. You know, it's different economy then, of course, as well. Yeah. You know, uh, but the business owner was like. I'll be the one suffering and holding it back because I want to keep my business going, you know? Yep. And that was really a concern. I didn't know what to do. And I, I suggested that, well, always, you know, do the the um, don't ask, don't tell thing. You know, people are going to have their opinion. Um, as long as you, could, you can't tell anybody how to think or how to feel, you can just say, as long as it's not disrupting the business, you yeah. know, but I guess the only defense is if the, someone is being disruptive about it, if they're forcing their opinion on you, yeah. Then maybe you can say something, but they were sort it's, of in a pickle. What? what yeah, how would is, you have advised them? It's it's a tricky spot we're in in America because generally that would be my advice as well. Like let's just focus on doing our job. Let's leave our our political, our social ideology out of our work. I, I'm a huge fan of that kind of thing. That being said, I just uh, you know a new customer for Red Balloon is Answers in Genesis. They're a, a Christian organization. They have an Ark Encounter. Uh, they do a magazine. You have a thousand employees, right? They're a pretty good size organization. Um, Indeed kicked them off and said, you can't post jobs with Indeed because of who you are. And so the uh, Ken Ham, who's the kind of CEO and founder, wrote a letter and said, look, we're we're just a, we're a Christian organization, but we're, we're looking to hire. Um, can't we participate in the platform? And Indeed basically said, you are not allowed to participate in this platform. Uh, which is interesting to me because we've also heard this from multiple other, you know, small construction company in Texas that said we are a, uh, they describe their business as God fearing and freedom loving. And indeed said you are banned for life from me being able to post jobs and hire through our platform. So, um, and we've heard that from a couple other businesses. So unfortunately, while I would say generally, let's just focus on doing our business we're in a moment when organizations like that, um, I heard from another organization that got canceled by Greenhouse, which is an ATS applicant tracking system. Mm -hmm. um, they're using their worldview to decide who they're going to support or not. Um, Salesforce um, a, has canceled some organizations that were connected to Roe versus Wade going down. And they said, we will not um, allow you to be our customer anymore. Uh, and which is, is is mind blowing to me like why would you why would you fire a customer a good customer who's paying you good money um because of what they do and so unfortunately the people on the left are more apt to use their ideology to push an agenda uh than the people on the right conservatives on average are just kind of live and let live you know you want to you want to vote for joe biden you know that's great as long as you have a good product i'm happy to buy it from you uh, but then we see this backlash finally when you see things like Target and Bud Light for conservatives like, why are you pushing this stuff on our kids, right? Yeah. And so what the left has been doing for a long time, this kind of cancel culture, getting you kicked off social media or software platforms or whatever, I think the conservatives are kind of like, you know, I don't know that it's as neutral as I wish it was. 
And so um, if you're going to start kicking my people off, then I'm going to stop using your services, right? So we shouldn't use Indeed. Indeed just um, uh, told all of their employees that if they are trapped in a state where uh, transgender surgeries are not allowed, that they will pay $10,000 to move that employee to a state where they can uh, make modifications or puberty blockers for their children. Well, $10,000 per employee to push an ideology well, if you're using Indeed, your profits are paying for that. And that's where I think people are starting to wake up and realize that it's not as neutral as we wish it was. Um, so when I ran my last business, I had 280 employees and I was an unapologetic conservative Christian, but that was not a prerequisite to work for the business. I said, look, I want everybody here. I want I want different points of view. Um, I don't care if you agree with me politically or socially. I want people who will do the job and will do a great job. Um, and that worked for a long time until my board started saying, you know, hey, you need to start making statements about George Floyd or about COVID or about. And I'm like, why would I do that? I'm running a technology business. Right. And so unfortunately, we've been forced into a world where it isn't as neutral as it used to be. Um, and I hope that we get back to it. Right. I, I wish red balloon dot work was not necessary because all job boards cared about freedom. We live in America for crying out loud. Why can't Answers in Genesis use um, Indeed? Um, well, Indeed said they're not allowed to. Now, Indeed's a private business. If they want to kick someone off, that is entirely their prerogative. But the market is going to respond to that. And that's what Red Balloon is. It's a it's a market response to an ideological push by a certain segment of big tech businesses. Um, and so if I'm if I'm talking to that business owner and they say, you know, I want to, well, they have a point because you want someone who's going to show up and take care of your customers. Now, if you had a, uh, you know, full on MAGA redneck, and I'll just you know, hopefully make some people angry on both sides, full on MAGA redneck, uh, and they're, you know, and you had a, a homosexual couple come into your business and they, and he just went sideways or she went sideways. Uh, that's also bad for your business, right? We want employees who will show up who will treat customers with respect and treat them well, and then turn around and uh, provide value for those customers, not push their ideology through the business. Um, and so whether it's on the right or the left, that's what we're trying to push for uh, with Red Balloon is how do we get employees who want to show up to work? They still believe in capitalism. They still want to be a blessing to their employer. And if you're a business owner, we all know those are the people you do want, right? You don't want someone who's got a political ax to grind one way or the other, you want someone who wants to show up and do their job. And so um, you do need to be somewhat discriminating in your hiring process because of that, because unfortunately, there are people who are pushing a worldview through their employment. We had one of our customers down in Texas was uh, they hired a head of customer service who was actively trying to destroy the business because they didn't believe in what they stood for. It was a cell phone company. Um and so this head of customer service was leaking information about the business out to the media, was hiring people who were not doing a good job, was actively trying to destroy the business because of what they stood for. So um, unfortunately, you do, need to, you do need to be discriminating um, in some ways in your hiring process. But I will point out that the interview process, when you're interviewing a new employee, that's a discriminating. I'm going to hire this person, not that person. Now, if you do it based on skin color or based on things outside of their performance, that's illegal and should be illegal, right? We want a meritocracy where people are judged based on the quality of their character, right? We all know that. So um, so that's what Red Balloon is trying to get us back to is an America where we can all respect each other, allow each other to work hard um, and not feel like a political ideology is necessary all the time. I'm wondering how does it indeed, um, well, they got a lot of money. So I guess I'm answering my own question by, yeah. by asking the question, but- how do they avoid legal jeopardy by telling someone um, we're, you're not allowed to use our platform because you don't believe the way we do? Because you know, I know I'm thinking about Hobby Lobby. I'm thinking about the, the right. other things like that and, and how they were, you know, maybe it's, is it just because one side of the political spectrum is not as litigious as the other side? Is that it? Uh, I think it is. It absolutely is. You know, I had a a, a bagel shop uh, owner here in, in my town in Idaho and he's like, you know, I didn't think the masks actually did that much, but I put up a mask required for my shop because if a conservative sees that, they're like, meh, shoot. Oh, well, I guess I'll put on a mask. He said, if I don't put it up, he said, the people on the left will absolutely blow me up on Twitter 
and crucify me. And so I think that's part of what we're dealing with here is um, Indeed is a private business. If they decide, so we were doing some work, Red Balloon was doing some work for Ron DeSantis campaign and Indeed did not want um, to have anything to do with that campaign um, because, but, but they're a private business in one sense, it is their prerogative, but there should be a market uh, response to that prerogative, right? Sure. If I was... Uh, if I did something illegal or if I was just discriminatory in my work here at Red Balloon, um, I would want the market to push back and say, well, we want uh, a meritocracy, not um, you to push on you know, specific ideologies. So um, that that's really what we're doing today is we're trying to get back to what made America great, which was work hard, show up um, and leave some of that political stuff out of the office. Are people, for the sake of those listening, they're going to say, okay, so I go to redballoon.work if I am a Hobby Lobby, if I'm a Chick-fil-A. Yeah. If, uh, is that specifically who should engage your platform or just anybody? Well, so we have every set business sign a pledge. And the okay. pledge basically says, um, I think the Constitution is a good thing. And I am guaranteeing to respect the freedom of my current and future employees, Right. That's not that complicated, but you'd be surprised how many businesses are like, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not comfortable, comfortable with that. Really? Um, you'd be surprised. And so like, and we do the same thing on job seekers. We say you're, you're signing a pledge that you're going to show up to work and you're not going to be a whiner. Um, and you'd be surprised how many people, when they see that pledge, they're like, yeah, that's not really, that's not really me. <laughs> and like, which saves our employers a lot of headache and hassle, right? Cause who wants a whiner? Um, and, and when you do things like, you know, I was, I was telling you earlier, like, uh, Adelaide from Microsoft called me up and say, look, I had an American flag as my team's background and HR called me and said, Hey, that's triggering to people because it's a sign of white supremacy in America. And so you're not allowed to have that anymore. And we're going to write you up for having an American flag in your background. Well, that's not freedom. Um, and that is pushing a worldview hard to the point where she's like, I'm out of here. Right. And so Microsoft just lost a really good employee. So, um, so unfortunately we are in a little bit of a polarization at Red Balloon. That is all you have to sign. You're going to respect the freedom of other people. You think the constitution is a good thing. And that is a surprising filtering mechanism, even though it really shouldn't be. Do you think that with the presidential election around the corner, that uh, the average office will get more political or less political? Uh, so during the last political cycle, during you know 2020 elections, um, I had a lot of colleagues who were CEOs of companies in Seattle and Portland and San Francisco who were using their company email list for their customers to say, you must vote for Joe Biden. This is the most important election ever, uh, which was really? shocking to me because it used to be that was totally out of bounds. But people sure. on the left feel, felt very comfortable doing that kind of thing. And I think, unfortunately, that is only going to ramp up. Um, if I were to guess... I would guess the cancel culture is actually going to be stronger because some of the people in big tech, like this is their religion, uh, politics is. And so I think they're going to use their platform. They're going to use their position to push on a political ideology, even though that shouldn't be the point of their business, but it is what they're trying to push for. So that was surprising to me. And that's part of the reason I started Red Balloon, because I'm like, man, if these CEOs feel comfortable using their company platform to push a political agenda, um, it is only a matter of time until they're going to start getting rid of employees that don't agree with that a political agenda. And that's where I wanted to be a landing place for those people. Or even those people will start self-selecting themselves out of the company because that's if right. they feel a different way, then they're going to feel like, I don't want to support this company because it supports beliefs that I don't um, agree with. That's right. Kind of thing. And that's then right. I guess it's also going to alienate them for certain customers as well. It's really tricky. That's why I always tell companies when, when possible, stay neutral as much as you can yeah. uh, when you can. I understand you have something called a Freedom Economy Index. What, what is yeah. that about? Yeah. So um, as as we continued to grow, we now have thousands of businesses. We partner with Public Square and they have tens of thousands of businesses. And we said, you know, there's a lot of small businesses in America that don't agree with um, don't have the same priorities as either big tech, uh, big businesses, or the people in D.C. 
Um, you know, and so we thought these people have opinions, but they don't really have a way to get those opinions out there and have their, their voice heard. And so we wanted to be the voice of the small businesses who are part of this freedom economy. And when I say freedom economy, it really should just be the economy because these are mostly small businesses who are tired of the woke ideology in the workplace. And they want to get back to just being good, hardworking Americans who show up and do their job. And so we surveyed these people and we surveyed over 50,000 businesses to ask them their opinion on um, political issues, on economic issues, on um, on their business and on their hiring plans. And it was fascinating because a lot of these businesses are, I think 80% of them were concerned that we're going into a recession right now. Mm. So they're feeling the pinch. Um, they feel like we're going to a recession. We asked them, what are the biggest concerns for their business? Um, it wasn't inflation, although inflation was number two. Their top concern for their business was they don't trust uh, elected officials. Um, lack of trust for elected officials is the biggest concern for their business because they don't know what those people are going to do to their small business. Right? right? I thought that was really fascinating. But while all of them are very concerned and see the issues that are in America today, all of them, well, not all of them, 65% of them said, but they're highly optimistic about their business or they're hiring right now, they're expanding right now. And so what we saw coming out of that survey, I'll call it is the tale of two economies. You have the economy where people show up and do their job and work hard. And then you have the economy where you're pushing an ideology, right? Silicon Valley Bank donated a lot of money to BLM. They did DEI training and their head of DEI did a weekly microaggression training for all the employees. Well, when you spend that much time on something not your business, you are going to fail. Like it's actually just not that complicated. It's not political. It's not ideological. It's just straightforward. So if all of my employees here at Red Balloon spend all their time playing basketball, my business is going to fail. Right. And so no matter what that thing is, and unfortunately, the the woke agenda is feels so religious in a lot of ways that people are willing to uh, effectively donate their company time to push a worldview rather than just do their job. And so this tale of two economies is really interesting right now where these companies in this freedom economy are moving to red states and they are thriving. Um, and the businesses on Red Balloon are thriving. Red Balloon itself has actually been growing 100% a quarter uh, so far this year, which is not relaxing, but is super fun. Um, and right. And, and you see public square growing really fast. Right. And so when you say, when you do what you say you're going to do, you show up and do your job and you don't spend all your time focusing on a political ideology, you are going to succeed as a business. And so this is the tale of two economies that kind of came out of this survey is that red states are thriving, red businesses are thriving, and blue states are struggling and blue businesses are struggling. You see the headlines for the big tech layoffs. Well, lots of these small businesses on Red Balloon and Public Square are growing and they're hiring and they're aggressively succeeding right now. And so I think that's one of the biggest takeaways. Um, another one that was fascinating to me is 60 percent of these businesses said they are more likely to vote for Donald Trump because of the indictments. Right. You would expect a, a right leaning group of people like this. Um, to be more willing to vote for the top Republican candidate right now. Sure. Um, but the fact that they are more likely because of the indictments, um, I thought that was really fascinating. It's a, it's a strategy that appears to be backfiring, um, indicting Donald Trump with the uh, mugshot heard around the world. Yeah, I think uh, some called it the uh, the Streisand effect. When you when Robert Streisand said, don't take pictures of my house, that just made more people take pictures of our house. That's it. That's it. That's it. <laughs> yep. It's like the more you say, don't do it, the more people are going to want to do it. Fascinating. Fascinating. I have really enjoyed this conversation. Uh, I definitely want to have you back on in the future. If someone wanted to um, connect with you to learn more about Red Balloon or about yeah. Square, about everything you're, you're into, how can they find you online? Yeah. So you can go to redballoon.work. It's not .com because .com sounded too much like communism to me and we don't want communism. We want work. So redballoon.work. Uh, you can go in there. If you're an employer and you want to hire the type of employees that show up and they're not whiners, I would encourage you to post your jobs in Red Balloon. The other thing that we do for employers, we actually started this with Louder with Crowder, is they uh, we do all the hiring for Louder with Crowder at this point. So we help write the job posting. We will post it multiple places. We'll filter the candidates and we'll do a first cultural interview to make sure that the person is the right fit for your business. So if you're terrified of hiring because America is so litigious, 
uh, we can take that over for you. We have a labor lawyer on staff and we work hard to make sure that we have the right people that are going to fit your culture, whatever your culture is, um, and make sure that your business is going to succeed. So, And then if you're a job seeker or you know someone who should be a job seeker because they're stuck at a woke business, um, send them over to redballoon.work. We're also on all the social media platforms, the woke ones and the non-woke ones, uh, at Red Balloon Work. Um, and we'd love you to uh, join the movement and be free because being free at work is uh, is more joyful than you can imagine. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much, Jim. Have a great day. Well, my time is up. I thank you for yours. I'll see you again real soon right here with a brand new episode of the Jim Stroud Podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to me. I can be reached by email at jimstroud at jimstroud.com. And one last favor, if I may ask, please rate this podcast. Uh, Five stars is preferred, (laughs) but uh, please uh, comment uh, with your honest opinion. I really appreciate that. All right. Okay, until next time, bye-bye.